Hey, so my name is John, and I'm gonna go through exactly how to set up the Vapi Outbound API. And I'm gonna go through the entire docs and show you a live representative of me going through an actual customer. And if you're wondering, how do I know I can actually do this? So I've actually worked with over 50 different businesses and helped all of them in a multitude of different industries, ranging from real estate to tree companies, landscaping, roofing, franchise consultants, and many different other industries. And we've helped these industries across the past couple years. And we actually originated as a landscaping company before we even starting this agency model. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up this documentation and actually put it into go high level so then you can make outbound calls. So it's actually a lot more simple than it looks. It looks super confusing, but I'll make it self-explanatory. So what you're gonna start out with is the actual URL. So you're gonna to wanna to copy that URL, go into high level and just paste it into this URL part. And we're gonna be using a custom webhook and it's gonna be a post. So once that's pasted in, the next step is the authorization and bear token. So you can get this out of your Vapi account. So here's an example of where to actually find it. You go into the account, you go and click on the API keys and you find this private key. So you're just gonna copy that and you're actually just gonna paste it in there. So now that we got those two parts, now we're just gonna start building the actual assistant. So right at the top, you got the name and the assistant ID. We're gonna disregard those. Um, this name is useless and the assistant ID. We're making a custom one, so we're not using the actual assistant in Bobby. So the first part is the actual assistant. So we gotta start making it. So we're using the provider Deepagram. The model is Nova 2. And then the language is the Australian because this is for an Australian client. Smart format, we wanna keep this false. Later down the line, we're gonna to wanna to switch that to true. But right now it's just not developed enough. So we just wanna keep it simple and make sure that it works 100% of the time. So keep that at false. The next from there is the actual prompting for the bot. So you're gonna put in the prompt, which is this content right here. So put in the information, whatever it needs to know. And you wanna roll it the assistant. So now that the prompting is actually made of the assistant, now we gotta start working on the back end of it. So the back end is like the functions, how it actually works. So we're gonna start by putting in the function um, and we're gonna use the function tool. So make sure you select this. I think it's originally a transfer tool. So click this button, click the function tool. From there, you wanna keep this async on false. This will make sure that the assistant is going to actually wait for the response. Otherwise, it's just gonna go and continue and say a bunch of random gibberish. We're making this function so that it can book. And if it doesn't wait for the response of the booking time, then it's gonna tell them, oh yeah, this random time is available. So we gotta make sure that that is set to false. Super, super important. After that, then you gotta start throwing the actual function in. So we're choosing the function. The name is what our actual function is. So it's gonna be the git calendar part. Um, there we go, now I open it back up. So the git calendar available times. And then with that, you wanna put in the description. So this is kind of telling the function what to do and when to do it. So I gave it a little bit of backend information on there. And then, where is this? There we go, cool. So now the description's in, parameter, we gotta actually throw a parameter so it can output and send a possibility of the time in there. So say the customer requests tomorrow at five o'clock, that property will make sure that it gets sent to the make automation and make is like, hey, this person actually wants to book at this time. So it actually understands the booking. So you start putting that in, you're gonna put in the selected slot, type it in as a string. It's going to be a string because it's gonna be a mix of numbers, letters, and variables. So you're gonna use that and then you gotta put in a description. So our description is, this is the, the user's preferred time for the appointment. Once that's all in there, it's almost good to go. I do a longer timeout just to be safe, 20 seconds. So it doesn't like rinse and repeat itself. And then the actual URL is just the make automation URL. So throw that in there, your functions are good to go. Keep going on this list, the tool IDs, we don't wanna work with that right now. All we want is this provider next. So you're gonna to wanna to select OpenAI. I personally prefer the 4.0 model, but all of these are good. 3.5 is a lot faster, 
less quality. Four is gonna be a lot slower, the highest quality possible. So now that you have the model selected, you can keep going, and now we're gonna actually be building the back end of the bot. So this is what it does, when it does it, and how it does it. So right here, we want that temperature, which is how it replies. So we're gonna just keep that at the symbol one. You can go down or you can go up, really depending on what you're looking for. Uh, knowledge base, we don't have a knowledge base in this case scenario. You can just throw one in there, super easy. We definitely want the 250 max tokens. This just makes sure it's limited. So you don't just spend a bunch of tokens and it's 10 times more expensive than it really should be. So this will max it out for you. The next part is the emotion recognition. You definitely wanna turn this on to make sure that the bot can actually understand the customer's emotions. So if they're super happy or super pissed off, it can actually understand that. So definitely keep that on. The next part is the actual voices. So in this scenario, I personally prefer the 11 lab voices. The other ones are good, but 11 labs is my favorite. So turn this true, true. 10 characters is the absolute minimum. Now let's see what else. The filler injection, false. The provider, 11 labs, that's just default. You can change these voices to any of them later using the ID of it, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and use Joseph. This stuff you can mess around with, raise it up, drop it down. Change it a little bit, really depending on how your bot acts and how it goes. Um, every bot is gonna be a little bit different for these numbers. So from there, speaker boost true. Streaming latency, I max this out just to optimize it a little bit more. And then 11 labs at the bottom. Um, this part is just to, for the languages, I prefer just simple English, keep it simple. Because once you start adding other languages, it, comes a ton of chaos and you gotta build other bots. So make it simple, make it just English for now. From there, we need the first message. So I have the assistant wait for the user to actually start saying something because if the assistant starts talking first, then it gets a little bit iffy and they might not say the right thing, they might get cut off. I found it's just best let them answer the phone and say, hello, who is this? And then the bot will reply, Oh yeah, you filled out our form, this and that, whatever the scenario is. So make sure to wait for it to be for the user. Turn your recording on true if you wanna record them. After that, let's see. We got the silence timeouts. So this is just basic information and stuff you gotta fill in. I do 30 second timeout, 0.1 delay. That delay, you can raise it a little bit, but I would be hesitant on that. We're gonna wanna do a silence timeout Right here, I have a 30 second timeout. So if there's complete silence for 30 seconds, then the bot is just gonna pretty much just end the call. That's just making sure that you don't just waste hours and minutes. So after that, you want the response delay. I want it to reply as fast as physically possible, personally speaking. So I keep mine at point one. The next one is the LLM delay. That's pretty much the same thing. It impacts how quickly it'll actually reply. So I'll keep that at 0.12. After that is the number of words to interrupt. You can raise this up a little bit, but three is usually a good number is what I found. So that kind of protects you against background noise, stuff like that. Next one is the max duration in seconds. I usually keep that at 1800 flat. Next is the background sound. I love the office sound because it just sounds a lot more realistic. It's not just an AI voice. It, you hear a little bit of background. It might actually pass as a human. That's what we found. After that is the back channeling. Just turn that enabled. Background, turn that enabled to make sure that it can actually track the background noise. So let's see what's next on the list. If I keep going down on here, we can just skip through all of this. So next is the phone number ID. You're gonna put in the actual ID of the phone number and you can just find that in Bobby. So if you can see right here, the phone numbers and the phone number ID, and this is the ID, it'll be right in there. So you would just use that and you would just paste it. Super easy. Keep going down a little bit more and you got the customer information. So you're gonna to wanna to put in a basic phone number. Um, you could also do this. So you could do the high level custom field. So it's, contact dot um, I, 
think it's contact.number. Let's just make sure. Phone raw format. So yeah, we're gonna just use that. And I just take this, paste. The next is just the name of the customer. So you can do pretty much the same thing, contact.name. So let's put that in here. Or we can do first underscore name. I don't know. Yeah. I notice when it says the last name, it gets a little bit iffy. First name is more than enough. So delete that. And then you're actually just gonna be able to use this and copy it. Make sure you don't copy that last piece that you don't want that. So copy it from there all the way up to right here, right after the data part. So just that information, you're gonna wanna copy it. And you're gonna wanna paste it into high level. So keep that, all of this, we did that at the start. So we just need to paste that right into here. I already got it in here, so I'm gonna just leave it as is. After this, you're gonna make sure that there's nothing like this. So bad characters or anything like that. Simple way to go and find the bad characters is it'll actually tell you exactly where they all are. So let's try to find some. Right here, perfect. And then looks like we have another. Right there. Let's find, well, I guess not. Well, I think that's a problem. So I'm gonna just delete that to be safe. There's another. Oh, cool, that's all of them on there. That should be all of them. So if I go in here, save all of this. Oh, the last thing and the best thing is actually testing the AI. So I'm gonna go into the test workflow and we're gonna choose this phone number and run the test. Now I should be getting a phone call right about now. Let's see, yep, and you can see I'm getting a phone call right there. So I'm gonna answer that. Hey, no problem, happy to help. How's it going? For a... Can't complain, how about you? What can I do for you today? Yeah, what do you guys do? You called me. Yeah, what do they what do they look like? You said the whole metal mouth thing. Tell me more. Yeah. Imagine nearly invisible braces. No metal wires or brackets, just clear, smooth plastic aligners that fit snugly over your teeth. Hmm. They do the same job as traditional braces, but way less noticeable. Sound good? Yeah, sure. Awesome. How about we set up a free consultation? I'll check for available times and get you sorted. Does that work? Yeah, what times are available? This will just take a sec. So we've got 2nd July at 10 a.m., 3rd July at 4.30 p.m., 4th July at 2 p.m. Can we do the July, July 2nd one? Sweet, let's lock in July 2nd at 10 a.m. I'll need your mobile number before I confirm it. Yeah, it's 734-316-8619. Hold on a sec. Sweet, your consultation is set for July 2nd at 10 a.m. Make 100% sure you've got that time blocked off. Yeah, I do. Awesome, thank Any you. Any other questions? Nope, that's it. Bye. Cool, take care. And that is the AI actually booking an appointment into the calendar. And you can hear that, that was pretty good. It explained exactly what the product and the service was and told them kind of what the next steps were and then booked it onto the calendar. So the AI is simple as that.
after watching that video, you should understand how to actually create the VAPI outbound AI using the API docs. And I showed you the simple run through. And at the end, I showed you exactly what a phone call sounds like. And I showed you a live representative of a phone call for that customer. So that's exactly how it works. And the AIs are super, super amazing. So if you're interested and you need some extra help on your AI or implementation in that way, feel free to reach out and we'll gladly help you out.